Success in economic development, marketing, and attraction is heavily dependent on marketing. Just as, as businesses know that more of your marketing resources are spent on developing new customers, it's the same thing in economic development. Resources need to be spent to market the state for new attraction. Uh, a quick couple of slides that help illustrate this point. Uh, most uh, economists will say that about 20% of jobs created in an economy come from new business attraction, uh, recruiting employees that you don't have today, and 80% come from growing what you already have. Uh, very similar to what businesses face with their existing customer sales versus new customer sales. In economic development, uh, disproportionately though, uh, the impact on the perception of a state as a place to do business is, is almost overwhelmingly impacted by your success in attracting new industry. In other words, it's not the expansion of the 10-person the machine shop down the road or the small business owner adding two employees. It's not necessarily those types of expansions which attract the headlines. What attracts the headlines are high-profile successes where a state is able to attract a new automotive plant or aerospace plant or a distribution center corporate headquarters. Those types of things tend to feed the perception of CEOs and business owners who are looking at where they're going to invest next. A good example of this is the state of Alabama. Fifteen years ago wouldn't have probably surfaced on the radar screen for any major new investments, but beginning with landing a Mercedes-Benz plant in 93, continuing to a Honda assembly plant in the late 90s, to Hyundai in 2002, to Airbus and ThyssenKrupp in 2006, Alabama has scored a progressive series of high-profile business recruitment successes, which in turn have fueled the perception among other companies that Alabama is the place to look when it comes to citing new investments. So essentially, success breeds success. Now what I want to spend a few minutes talking about are the industry is an industry opportunity that I think bodes well for Missouri. What you see here in front of you is a wind resource map. What this demonstrates is where in the United States wind blows the fastest and most consistently and is the most dependable as an energy source for powering our energy needs. We all know that wind energy, amongst other renewables, is a very well-talked about subject right now with the economic stimulus plan in Washington, D.C. Renewable energy, including wind, is going to be a big part of that. This shows where those wind farms are most likely to build. That yellow part of the country, mostly stretching from North Dakota down to North Texas, overlapping quite a bit on northwest Missouri. Senator Lager, your district has quite a few of the wind farms operating today in Missouri. Why do I bring this up? The economic opportunities from a job creation standpoint aren't necessarily in where the wind farms are being built, although those are important. It's in the manufacturing of the components that are used on those wind farms. The three big categories are the blades, the nacelles, which are the motors, and the towers. These are the three big parts of a wind turbine that you see as you drive by these many wind farms. The nacelle, it's a 100-ton piece and it's got 8,000 separate components. Why do I bring that up? 8,000 separate components mean that as companies look to locate close to wind farms where they're going to assemble one of those three main components, there are 8,000 additional components that need to go into a nacelle. These are opportunities for existing Missouri manufacturers to get into that supply chain and grow their existing businesses. If we're successful in attracting the manufacturers of the three pieces of equipment, we are going to be even more successful in giving expansion opportunity to current Missouri businesses. The tower, 300 feet in height, fabricated metal, again, same thing. A lot of supplier possibility there, as are the blades. The defining characteristics of these products, the turbine, the, the blades, the tower, the nacelle, they're expensive to transport, they're difficult to transport because of the dimension. They're traditionally made in Europe. So what does that mean? As the U.S. wind market continues to grow, these European manufacturers are going to look to migrate their production over here to the United States. So that means we have an attraction opportunity not just with the equipment makers, but again, the expansion opportunity with the many suppliers who support this growing industry. You know, it's uh, a uh, challenge to, especially in today's world, where so much is, is focused on how do we invest public dollars and where do we invest public dollars to make this economy stronger, to turn it around. Uh, it's in the journal every day, it's in our local newspapers, it's even in the sports page sometimes. And so, uh, it's those of us that are in the world of economic development that's our lives that's where we spend all of our time trying to determine where and how we should apply public dollars to cause private investment 
which ultimately causes more private investment, which causes an economy to turn around. So there's this, this, this notion that to move it from research into a company, you have to pass through this valley of death in which you have to get this prototype out and, and, and create a team and attract investors before you ever get to this part of, of sales and growth and maturity. And this valley of death is, is sort of where we're having a problem. Equity investors come in at this point, angel capital investors, venture capital investors, and they're the ones that help the entrepreneurs cross this, this valley of death. So about this research uh, that was done by uh, Dr. Perry, we found that, uh, as Greg mentioned uh, in his presentation, one of these six core areas of growing our own, you know, we're fantastic at competing and winning federal research dollars. Ninth in the United States. That's really good. I mean, these are people that are putting in proposals, being measured uh, on their merit, uh, and we're bringing that money into the state. Where we start to fall down is our ability to turn that research into companies that then turn them into products and sell them. So uh, that's where we're really focused, and we're trying to understand why, why we have that difficulty, why we're 27. So there's a couple of programs these other states are doing that we wanted to bring to your attention. Angel tax credits is one of them. These are all the states around us that are doing angel tax credits. Um, I think Kansas has been very successful with their angel tax credit. I think there's a number of examples that uh, we've used before you on different occasions of Kansas City, Missouri companies moving across the state line to move into Kansas where their investors can take advantage of a tax credit. Also important is the seed stage, these early stages where the company is trying to cross this valley of death. Many states are getting involved and taking equity possession, positions providing the capital that goes into the company, taking equity for that, helping the company get to the point where other formal venture firms are gonna take it to the next level. The states around us have been pretty good at it, maturing their companies and bringing in that extra capital. Uh, at one point, there was <clears throat> some hopes that we were still gonna get some of the Bombardier mm -hmm. money, J money. Uh, is that still online? And uh, what lessons did we learn from that effort? You know, I'll let Chris speak to if it's still online because uh, he's been involved with that. But uh, uh, we learned a lot. First of all, we learned a lot as the General Assembly about how what the pro best process is to pass legislation that responds to an economic development opportunity, um, and uh, so that pathway has been laid for future opportunities. Uh, we also learned that uh, it's high stakes you've got to have uh, you've got to have the tools you've got to have the uh, relationships with site location consults with other com companies uh, that in order to be successful uh, the other thing is we learned that that Missouri now uh, I've not spoken to a site location consultant that didn't know about the Bombardier deal uh, people are looking at us uh, and visiting the state of Missouri that had no inclination to do so before that deal. Uh, the other thing is that, you know, any, you usually fail two or three times before you really land something of that size. Uh, and we were, we, we were very, very close to that deal and we didn't get it. Um, but I feel very confident if our efforts continue that we'll be successful in the future. And what's, what's hard is that states that have got it down are just reeling them in like fish right now uh, because they've been uh, developing these relationships over time. The other aspect that uh, feeds that is that other states like Michigan and Ohio and, and that are struggling uh, mightily now. And so they're doing everything they can just to keep their head above water, not focusing on those relationships we are going to bring jobs down the road. So the strong are getting stronger and the weak are getting weaker. Um, and so the Bombardier deal was a, uh, it put us in a position where we're seen as a state that wants to engage. Long answer, I apologize, but that's my opinion. Well, uh, that tempest or right. Uh, again, just to echo what uh, Greg indicated, the frustrating thing about business attraction is rarely is there anything to show for coming in second place. But I think in this case, with such a high profile company and project, what Missouri did succeed in doing is making a name for itself uh, after a long time of maybe being less visible on the national stage. And so by coming in second, 
the Missouri name was out there, people knew that a world-class company like Bombardier was looking at Kansas City for making its next generation product. And, and that's enough to generate interest among other aerospace players to take a look at Missouri and, and Kansas City specifically. So it's a consolation prize, yes, but a good one to lay the foundation for future marketing efforts.